Now we're going to totally switch gears from Miss Terry in the 1830s to uh, Flyer Boone in the early 1800s before then. He's going to talk about uh, early Kentucky before the 1830s. So I uh, will let them take it away. They're right up here. They, they have loud voices. <laughs> Well, let me put it this way. Uh, Squire Boone was a Baptist preacher, but I don't have a voice as loud as most Baptist preachers, so come on up here. <laughs> Move on up this way, if you will. That's fine. <laughs> How you doing tonight? It's kind of chilly when you're in the cemetery this late at night, ain't it? Well, folks, my name is Mike Rumping. This is my wife, Nancy. We do first-person living history portrayals of Squire and Jane Boone, Daniel Boone's younger brother, and we also do Simon and Betsy Kenton. Now, I didn't know that we were supposed to give about a 10-minute talk tonight. Lisa just told me a few minutes ago. <laughs> now, I have no problem with talking. The hard part's going to be keeping it down to about 10 minutes. I guess the best thing to do, I usually talk in 18th century, uh, but this short a period of time, what I'd like to do is just tell you a few final facts about Squire. And then I told Lisa later on, if she'd like to, that we could come down and do a, an actual presentation, which takes about an hour, uh, as another fundraiser. Now, at this time, I want to tell you a few final things about Squire Boone. He was a man that lived in the shadow of his brother Daniel most of his life. But in many ways, I think he was Daniel's better. We found documentation that has stated that Daniel was always amazed that Squire could find him so easily in the wilderness of Kentucky when there was no roads, maps, or anything. He not only found Daniel one time, but he also found him up to eight times. Squire would make arrangements with Daniel to meet him at a station camp in Kentucky. Not only on a certain day, but also at a certain hour. He was always there. And Daniel was always amazed. So I've got younger brother in our presentation making fun of his older brother, saying, Brother, you weren't that hard to follow. You left too many tracks. Now, Squire was best known as an Indian fighter. But he could also practice in medicine in a pinch. He was a farmer, an explorer. He was a self-proclaimed Baptist preacher. It was said that he would give sermons on how to kill engines with a rifle in one hand and a Bible in the other and sing the psalms that backed him up. He did not become politically correct <laughs> in his older age. He, was, uh, he performed the first wedding ever in all of Kentucky when he married Samuel, Sam Henderson and Betsy Calloway at Fort Boonesboro three weeks after the girls were all kidnapped by the Indians, and they rescued him. His son was amongst the first white children ever born in all of Kentucky. Uh, Enoch was either the second or third child. I'm not sure which. There's some discrepancies there. Um, it's hard to say for sure, but we know he was amongst the first white children. He was a carpenter. You ought to see some of the furniture Squire made. It was amazing his abilities. He was a stone cutter. He carved beautiful stonework at, um, when he moved down by Corydon, Indiana, 13 miles south of Corydon, in what is now called Squire Boone Village, in Squire Boone Caverns. They still got a lot of the stonework on display down there. When Squire helped his brother Daniel move to Missouri, he had full intentions of moving out to Missouri with him. He built him a stone house and that stone house still stands today. Now, I just found this out about a few months ago, and we were offered to get a chance to go down and spend the weekend in Squire's home. But Jane wasn't with him. She sent his children to Missouri to bring him back home and get his butt back where he belonged. <laughs> you see, Squire, Squire had moved Jane about 13 times. They had lived in Florida, uh, Louisiana, all over the country be honest. And Jane just flat out told him, I'm not moving that far again. She agreed to go to the new territory of Indiana, and so they moved there in 1804. Now, before 
Squire moved to Indiana, though. He went to decide where he was going to build his cabin. Get off of my hand. In the trip there, now you got to remember, him and Daniel had hunted this area in 1780 before Daniel ever moved to Missouri. When they were there, they discovered two caves. There was a small cave up on the hill and a large cavern down below with torrents of water just coming out from under it. And Squire thought back then this would be a perfect spot to build a grist mill someday. Well, when Jane refused to move, he decided he was going to go there and pick out a spot for the cabin. While there, Indians come running down this hill at him, going to kill him. They recognized the Boone. And uh, Squire remembered exactly the location of that little cave that he had seen 20 years before. Took a flying leap, landed right in the middle of that little cave, pulled brush over the top of him, and was praying incessantly that the Indians wouldn't find him. They stepped right over the top of him, and after that he considered it his holy ground. And he told his son Enoch, when I die, I want to be buried there. And when he died in 1815, Enoch and his other sons carried him up to that little cave and put him in there. Now even at death, Squire never found peace. He was a boon. People started coming in. They started breaking off pieces of the coffin. Pretty soon they broke through the coffin and they started stealing some bones. Enoch saw this and the Boone family likes to say that um, Enoch had taken the bones and buried them in a secret place down in Kentucky, they think around Fort Knox. But we do know in 1973 when the land was sold, the sons of the owner went into this small cave up on the hill looking for scriptures that Squire had supposedly carved up on the walls. Instead, they found something else. They never did find the scriptures, but they stepped on something and all that silt. They found a skull and 27 bones. The skull, the skull had the same tomahawk wound above the forehead uh, that Squire had received at the Battle of Coe Spring in an Indian fight. And Squire made the comment, it was the best little Indian fight I ever had. We both stood tall and we fought well. Um, the word was put out to all the Squire Boone descendants. They came and gathered, built him, made him a new shroud, built him a new walnut car, coffin, and they put his bones into this new coffin, and they put him down in the larger cavern. You can visit that cavern today and see Squire's coffin. It's got a stone that was put up by the DAR some years back. There's 76 winding stairs that go down to it, and I know the exact number because it was six months after I had total knee replacement that I walked those steps, and I counted every one of them, bleeding blood, believe me.